Mark, Vora, ha, ha. It sounds like a real big fucking thing to say. But it's a name, and it may be a very big thing to say. Mahak Vora. For mayor in 2019, something like that, I don't know. Just vi did a video how happy I was to be back even though I didn't have anything to say while I was gone. They're like, oh, you're okay. Appeal granted. And I'm like, ha, 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 I gotta say something. And so I said something. And I, I get Lucas coming in and saying, hey, good to see you made it. I'm like, yeah, thanks. I don't know what I'd have done if I didn't have anybody to talk to but myself. Thought that's what I was doing. And so I look into Lucas's videos like I do with everyone so far, because I mean, it only happens every once in a while. It's not like it's busy work. I'm just curious, it's a human trait. And I look into his thing and I say, Mahat Vores, or whatever the hell her name is, I've forgotten it by now. But it's, it's got this woman that's stuck nine hours in Shanghai. And I'm like, huh, I'll watch this. And because I've been stuck in Shanghai for longer than that. And they were just on a layover and took the maglev into town. I'm like, I took the maglev. And the funny thing is, she acts like, you know, it's a normal thing. It, it rises above the ground. It's like anti-gravity shit, you know? It, it's Isaac Asimov stuff. Anti-grav, just you can fly anywhere. Just make the molecules work. And I, I, I got to ride it on the way in after I was running late to get to the airport, the Shanghai airport. But she says, yeah, it runs about 300 kilometers per hour. And I, I remember that it's like 200 miles and it's just smooth. The thing is that she missed was that when I'd come back from China the first time before going back the second time, I, I lay in there in a room looking at PBS and they were talking about the magnetic levitation trains that they were designing in China. I was like, I sure would like to see that. And so the next time I ended up there, they had just opened it in May and this was like July or something. I'm like, oh boy, I got to ride that fucker. So smooth, just shh. So I was excited that she talked about riding on the maglev. It's just beautiful. Uh, anybody gets a chance to do it, do it. The only difference is she spent time, I see her videos, she's in there eating Chinese food, and I'm like, I fucking hate Chinese food. Ah, it makes me sick to my stomach, it makes me ill. It's nothing against the Chinese. I've never had any problem with them. But their food is not for me. I was born Polish. The Polish food is not for me. It's not about anything but the fact that food is not for me. I'll drink to that. Well, oh, yeah, sure. That's Kutonghua, Mandarin for... Me too. She went back into Shanghai. I was trying to get out. And they're telling me I only had 45 minutes to make it before the, the airlines closed at the, the gates. She couldn't, I'm like, I can make it. And this woman, and I have to tell you, I could not tell you what it is I said, but we were speaking Chinese back and forth so well 
You hear that? See, that's one of those those psych, psychic exams they do. A computer will say something and they cut it off and you say the next word. You thought I said so good, you heard it. But the good never came out of my mouth. I fixed it in my mind. I meant to say well, but you heard me say so good. And then I said, well, and you heard it. I even heard it. Then I said, well, what am I supposed to do? She argued so long that at that point there was no way I, nobody has any idea how fast I can move. I can move so fast I'm invisible. Ask the cops. She said no. By the end of it, by the time she was done argument, arguing, I looked and I said, there's no way I'm gonna make it anyway. I said, well, what am I supposed to do all night? And she said, I didn't know. You stay in the airport. I said, can I sleep here? And she said, I don't know. I'm, I'm translating now. And so I just took my shit off my back and I laid down on the little compartment carrier that runs your shit through to get on the airplane. I laid back down there and I said, okay, I'll sleep here. And she's like, okay. You see what I tell you about how wonderful China is, it's lawless. She didn't call the cops. I slept there, I woke up there hours later. I said, ah, I'm on the conveyor belt to go into the airplane. And so I got up and I walked around and I had to wait 24 hours from the time I missed my flight. And so I just drank with people and I found ties and I tied them on my head and I talked to Iranians outside and we went Interesting thing when you're talking to an Iranian and you speak Chinese and English, every time your English starts to falter, as theirs does, you're speaking, they don't speak English. You're speaking to each other and you just slide into Spanish somehow. You go from Mexican or from Arabic to Chinese to Mexican. And at, at some point you realize there's no even, not even a reason to uh, try to speak any particular language. Just talk to the person and speak. You understand them, don't you? It's not like you're speaking in code. Vora, uh, Mahandek, whatever. Her name is Lucas. Tell her I said hi.